morning. Good morning and welcome back to JPC, Spiritual Talk. It's Jared Campbell. So this morning's reading will come out of John chapter 10. I'm going to read the first 21 verses here in John 10. Jesus is the good shepherd. Before we get into this reading, we start off by asking the Lord a quick prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we're going to ask the Lord. We're going to ask the Lord to shine into our hearts, O loving Master, the pure light of your divine knowledge. And open up the eyes of our mind that we may understand your teachings in scripture. Help us apply what we learn that they're having conquered simple desires. We may pursue the spiritual way of life, thinking and doing all the things that are pleasing to you. Through Christ our God, you are light and to you we give glory. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, for the sages. Amen. For it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that pleases in the mouth of God. Again, again. My mother, brothers, and sisters are those who hear the word of God and do it. The Lord is our shepherd. All right, good morning. Good morning. Welcome back. So grace is faithfulness. Indeed, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. Christ is in our midst. The true definition of minister is to serve someone else's will. It's my pleasure to bring you all God's word. So John chapter 10, Jesus, the good shepherd. Get our screen shared over and get right to our reading. So Jesus, the true shepherd, in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Most surely I say to you, he who does not enter the sheephold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he who enters the door, but he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hears his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Jesus, the good shepherd. Then Jesus said to them again, most surely I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All whoever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not bear, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hearing, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hairling flees because he is a hairling and does not care about the sheep. I'm the good shepherd and I know my sheep. And I am known by my own. As the father knows me, even so I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And all other and, and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice. And there will be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore, my father loves me because I lay down my life, that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it again. This command I received from my father. Therefore, there was a division again among the Jews because of these sayings. Many of them said he has a demon and is mad. Why do you listen to him? Others say, these are not the words of the one who has a demon. Can a, de can a demon open the eyes of the blind? And the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we start out, we start out reading right here in verse 1. But the conversation actually begins, right? In John chapter 9, starting in verse 41. And Jesus said to them, If you are blind, you would have no sin. But now you say, We see, therefore your sin remains. So the conversation stops there. And when the end, there is no break. Right? So 
that's where the conversation begins with the Pharisees, and it continues, as there's no break between John chapter 9, verse 41, and John chapter 10, verse 1. So all this is taking place at the conclusion of the Feast of Tabernacles. We see that Christ is what con he's contrasting the leadership, right? So he's contrasting the leadership of the Pharisees to his own, right? So that's what he's doing. So he's contrasting his leadership to that of the Pharisees, right? Because they have failed what as pastors of God's people. Pastor, right, comes from the Latin word shepherd. Their leadership has been marked by deceit and pride and has lacked compassion. Christ, on the other hand, fulfills all the virtues. According to St. John Christensen, right? So according to St. John Christensen, the door is God's word, meaning both the scriptures and our Lord himself. In verses 7 and 9, it says, Then Jesus said to them, Again, most surely I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Since the scriptures reveal God the word, the one who tries to lead in a way that is neither in Christ nor according to the teaching of the scriptures is considered a thief and a robber. Rather, rather than using the door so all can see his works openly, these false shepherds use underhanded means to control, steal, and manipulate people, ultimately destroying their souls. Look at verse 10. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and destroy. I have come that you may have life, that you may have it more abundantly. In contrast, those pastors who lead according to Christ will find eternal life. Look at verse 9. I am the door. If anyone who enters by me will be saved. He'll go in and out and find pasture. Look at verses 3 and 5. Verses 3 through 5. Let's read these again. It says, To him, the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hears his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him. For they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. So Christ has intimate knowledge, right? So Christ has intimate knowledge. Right? Christ has intimate knowledge of every person. So also true pastors in the church should strive to know their people by name, that is, personally. These pastors endeavor to understand each person's situation and needs, from the greatest to the least, possessing Christ-like compassion for each one. In return, the people respond to a true leader, trusting he is a follower of Christ. Where a bishop is present, there the people shall gather. St. Anesius of Antioch said that. Indeed, the response of the faithful can be a better indicator of who is a true shepherd than the claims of leaders. So, so indeed, the response of the faithful can be a better indicator of who is a true shepherd than the claims of, of leaders. Look at verse 8. All whoever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. So the phrase, all whoever come before me, it's not referring to Moses or, or the genuine prophets, but people claiming to what be the Messiah, both before and after Christ, right? Here is one example, Judas of Galilee. Verse 10. The thief does not come except to steal, to kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life, and they may have it, and they that they may have it more abundantly. So it was the true. Who is the true and ultimate thief? Satan. Right? <sighs> well, the ultimate thief is Satan, who spreads lies and heresies among the people of God, luring them away, right? Luring away both leaders and people. Life means living at God's grace here on earth, while the more abundant life indicates the kingdom that is to come. In verses 11 through 15. It says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hearing, 
he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. The wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hairling flees because he is a hairling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep. And I'm known by my own. As the father knows me, even so I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. So we see Christ revealing himself as what? The good shepherd. Because he enters by the door. That was in verse 2. Okay. What did it say? Verse 2. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Right? So Christ re reveals himself as a good shepherd. One, he enters by the door. Right? That is, he fulfills the scriptures concerning himself. Two, he knows, right? He knows and is known by the Father. That was in verse 15, right? As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Three, he knows his people personally and therefore is known by them. Verses 3 and 14, right? Back to verse 3. To, to him, the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. In verse 14. I'm the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and, I, and I'm known by my own. For he gives his life for the sake of his people. That was in verse 11. I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Which is a direct prophecy of the coming of his passion. Verse 16 says, And, all, and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice. And there will be one flock, one shepherd. So the other sheep here is talking about the Gentiles. Who will be brought into what one flock with the Jews under one shepherd? For example, the church transcends ethnic and racial lines. It has been, here's, a, here's something with the Orthodox Church, right? It has been the Orthodox teaching from the beginning that there will be one bishop serving in a city, Canon 8 of 1, Naesia, a principle affirmed in every generation writing in the second century to a church that held separate liturgies for Jews and Gentile Christians. St. Anesius taught, be careful to observe a single Eucharist, for there is one flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ and one cup of his blood that makes us one and one altar, just as there is one bishop. This is in line with God's will. Verses 17 and 18. We're almost through. It says, Therefore my father loves me because I lay down my life, that I may take it again. And no one takes it from me, but I lay it down myself. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it again. This command I received from my father. So I lay down my life. The Lord is clear that his life giving death will be what voluntary. So you know, he's he went to the cross at his own free will. He voluntarily, right, gave his life on the cross. He does nothing apart but from the will of his father. As he laid down his life for us, we lay down our lives for him and for the sake of others. Ah, beautiful. It's beautiful. Verse 21. It says, others said, these are not the words the one who has a demon. Can a, de can a demon open the eyes of the blind? So this, may, so those who respond in faith, right, are not merely impressed by signs, but perceive the holiness of his words. We experience God's true grace, right? When you experience God's true grace, right? signs and wonders, they're just part of that. But it's for how it's how we respond in faith that it's more important, right? What did Jesus tell Thomas? Blessed are those who believe but have not seen, right? 
But Jesus said that to Thomas. He was talking about all those during that time and the times that were to come. Blessed are those who believe but don't see. Right? It's how we respond in faith. So Jesus is a good shepherd. This is our reading this morning. i to close out in prayer. It's one of my favorite readings out of John. The, I like to read this and break this reading down. It has a lot in it. And it's a good study. Thank you all again for following. Hope you enjoyed the reading and the discussion. You can close out in prayer. Thank you again so much for following. You know, one quick thing, though. The entire conversation, right? That whole conversation was really about was that Jesus was telling the Pharisees how they failed, right? They failed as shepherds, right? Their mission, their duty was to be good shepherds to, to the people, to the people of Israel. Right? They were the religious leaders at that time, the Sanhedrin had a lot of power, a lot of pull, but they failed, right? So that was that whole conversation was about is how they failed, right? And how they failed for being compassionate to the people. They were more worried about looking good, right? It was all about an outside appearance while the inside was a mess. Right? When Jesus came, started to, sh to, to, to reveal that to people, that there's a lot of people you may follow. They may look good on the outside, but they're a mess on the inside. So this is what this reading is also about. Is be, be careful who you follow. It's another thing we get out of this. Be careful who you follow, right? There are good shepherds, right? And then there's false ones. Something may look good on the outside, but doesn't mean it's good on the inside. Be careful. Be careful with outward appearances, right? That's also what that's saying. Be careful of outward appearances, right? Look for the inner, the internal, right? Just because something may seem good on the outside doesn't mean it's good on the inside, right? Sometimes fruit can look good on the outside, and then you open it up, and it's rotten on the inside. You ever pick fruit from a tree, right? You ever had that happen? Something may appear good on the outside, and when you open it up, it's not so good on the inside, right? You ever pick fruit from a tree? Any type of fruit happens sometimes, right? It may look good, and you open it up and realize not so good, right? That's what it's talking about, right? You'll know them by their fruits, right? That's what Jesus was saying. Jesus said, I'm, I'm the ultimate shepherd, though, right? He's the ultimate shepherd. So I'll have in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord God, he's one of your divine secret words. You illuminate the souls of sinners to comprehend what we just read. That we don't appear simply as hear spiritual words, but doers of good deeds, true pursuers of faith. Having to blame his life and conduct without approaching Christ the Lord, you are life, and to you will be glory. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever. The sages, amen. Our Father, who art in heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. But yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever. Endless ages. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be merciful to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever. Sages. Amen. We depart in peace, in the name of the Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Peace be with you all, go in peace. Shalom, shalom. May the Lord forgive those who love us and those who hate us. All right? Thank you all again for following. I love you all so much. Jerry Wesley Campbell, good morning, good day. All right? Whenever and however, all these messages and studies find you all. I love you all so much. We will continue in Acts today. So, Acts chapter 16. I got home a little late last night, so it was too late to 
post a video and do a write up. So we'll continue today in Acts chapter 16. So thank you all again for following. JPCE, spiritual talk, never ever hold back. Right? Seek truth. Develop a relationship with him. Right? Give him your heart. He does the rest. I love you all. I'm out.